uh, hi everyone this is another video for math 2400 um, in this video we'll discuss like um, you know what an eavesdropper must do to try and uh, decode the ciphertext okay, so we've already seen that Alice and Bob are trying to communicate securely um, Bob has published his private his public key and kept secret his private key. Alice has used the public key to um, encrypt her secret message M, and he's she sends a ciphertext C to Bob. Okay, and we've seen that Bob receives C and is able to get M back. Okay, um, now that's uh, that's all good, but if Eve can also decrypt M, then that's not very good. Okay, so we want to make sure, like, um, we want to make sure that uh, the problem of, like, that Eve, it must be hard for her to recover M if she's given C. And actually, this problem, um, it, I'm like simplifying it a lot. You know, there's a lot of things that can go wrong you know, um, in this step, but I'll just give you a brief idea of like what, 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 what happens when we try and, um, you know, break this system. Okay. So here's all the information that Eve has. So Eve is given, um, ciphertext C, she's given the public key and E, and she knows, just somehow she knows that, um, I mean, like, given that Bob has published his public key, she knows that uh, Bob and Alice are using um, this RSA crypto system. Okay, so she knows that um, she has to find um, M, she knows there exists M such that M to the E equals C, and and she wants to find M. Okay. Okay. So how, how could she possibly do that? Um, well, one way would be to find uh, phi of n. Okay. One way to find m is to either find d or phi of n. You know, if she finds d, then she just computes c to the d, and she's done. If she finds phi of n, then she computes um, d such that e d is congruent to 1 mod phi of n, and she's done. Okay, so either find d or find phi of n, both are the same. Okay. So, um, therefore, we can say if Eve is able to discover um, d, or if she's able to compute phi of n, um, she can recover m, and that would be bad. Okay, so um, so how can she find phi of n? Well. Um, one way is to factor n. So now we can say, because, so now we can say if Eve is able to, f to factor n, then she, so she can um, write n equals p times q, and then find of n 
which is p minus 1 times q minus 1. Okay. Conversely, it, it turns out if she knows phi of n, um, she can kind of compute uh, the factorization of n if she knows n, right? Because phi of n is just pq minus p plus q plus 1. So, if, if she, so that's just n minus p plus q plus 1. Okay, so if she knows phi of n, she knows p plus q, and she also knows p times q. Well, therefore, she also knows p and q because she can just factor. So what you would do, you're given p plus q equals x, maybe pq equals y. If you compute x squared minus 4y, well, this is just p squared plus 2pq plus q squared minus 4pq. Let's just um, p minus q squared. Okay, from that you can just compute the square root. The square root, you get p minus q. And once you know p minus q and p plus q, you get p and q, right? Just by solving a system of two linear equations. Okay, so so. So if we know phi of n and n, we can compute the factorization. If we know the factorization, we can compute phi of n. Okay. Um, okay, so it, it seems, and I, if I remember correctly, I think finding d is just about as hard as this, as long as, um, is like kind of no, like you know, as long as you you yeah I think it, yeah, I think finding D is just as hard as these things as well. Okay, and, and, and now like so, how hard is it to factor n? Um, it's pretty hard. You know, how do you factor n? Well. Uh, Naively, how hard is it to factor n? Well, remember, like, n has, like, maybe hundreds of digits or so. And I'll describe, uh, this is not the most efficient way to factor a number, but um, to be honest, like, the best way is like a lot better than this but like still still quite slow so what do you do um you know you just do uh you you write down all the numbers from one up to square root of n this is a number with half as many digits as n so if n had 200 digits, this has 100 digits. Really, really big. Okay, so you write them all down. Well, you don't write down one. And then you circle two. You cross off all the twos, all the multiples of two. Um, actually, I mean, if you're doing this, you don't really do that. You get a computer to do it and you like, um, like skip this step you don't consider any I mean if n is even it's not well, p or q is 2 is like not that okay but anyways okay, so you cross off all the multiples of 2 and then and then you circle 3 and you cross off all the multiples of 3 okay and each time you circle a number you check uh, is n divisible by that number is n divisible by the next one the next one is 5 you circle five, cross off all the multiples of five. You check is five, it does five divide n. Okay. And you do that for every, every you circle every, you're, you're, you're finding all the prime numbers, checking if they divide n. So doing that, you know, uh, takes quite a long time. Um, In particular, um, like, 
like the reason why we say it takes a long time we want it to take it, it takes a long time time in terms of the number of digits the number of digits of n or in other words the log of n okay because um like computing the m to the e and computing c to the d that doesn't take long in terms of the log of n uh, that's like um like d and e are both less than or equal to n and the 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 time it takes to compute a power like that is uh log of d and log of e so like less than this number but this takes um, quite long like imagine like how many primes are there up to square root of n well we know that just just roughly there's like about square root of n times log of square root of n so in other words a half log n okay this is a number that's much bigger than log n that's how many primes you have to check divide n okay. not to mention you have to find them all okay so so um imagine like n is like um two to the one thousand and then this is two to the five hundred divided by um so log of n is a thousand so divided by five hundred. Okay, two to the five hundred divided by five hundred. Well, 500 is about like what to the ninth maybe so that's about like it doesn't take anything off almost so so it would be like to the 491 ish okay um and that's that's only how many primes there are so you don't i didn't discuss like how many like how you have to do all the crossing off and stuff Okay, so that's pretty long, whereas, so it takes like 2 to the 491 steps to factor n. That's really, really slow. Okay. Um, of course, there's like more efficient, this is just the sieve of Eratosthenes, so this is like not an efficient way to do things, but um, even the efficient ways are like way more efficient than this but they don't come close to like uh being practical for this problem um i will say this is just a very simplified account um you can imagine like you know sure like eve might give up but there's like other things that eve can do to try and trick things um there's other weaknesses like there's kind of other arithmetic tricks she, she can do to try and factor n that you have to be careful of when you choose um, your your private key and, and this kind of thing. And you know you can also think about like um, you also have to be careful of how how you send your message because like um, you know like say say Alice say Eve knows that Alice will send a message yes or no. Well, Eve could just send both of those compute um, both of those messages ciphertexts, and then and then see which one like matches up with the one that Alice is sending. So, so there needs to be like some way Alice needs to um, figure out some way to to like pad her message. So, it, like, there's all kind of tricks and stuff Eve could do. Um, and so, you know, in practice, you need to be very careful that you don't fall into any of those these these traps. Um, anyways, that's about all I'll say um, about this. Um, thank you for for watching. Um, bye.